Hi wonderfully created, welcome back to Created I Am. I'm going to show you how to sew three jackets today, yes three, well technically a jacket, a shawl and a poncho and what's great is for you non-sewers there's a super easy project in here for you. First step of course is the material, you want something that's jacket like. What I also used actually was this fabric that you normally have for hoodies. I was going to use it for a hoodie but then I thought oh why not make a jacket from this and oh it turned out so well. There's a link to where you can get it and it will also be on the website soon. The main measurement you actually need to measure is your head circumference. You can also measure your hand to hand length or you can do that thing where you just hold the fabric to your body and make sure it's long enough. You want the fabric to be long enough to go from one hand to the other then you're going to decide the height which is your shoulder to your hip probably or waist and then double that and that will create your rectangle. Cut that out and then just fold it four times, once across the length and one across the width. So you should now have like four pieces of fabric on top of each other. Take your head circumference measurement and add about four centimeters to two inches to it just to have extra room and take that and fold it twice. By folding it twice, you divide that measurement by four. Generally map out a curve for your neck. You want the neck to be shallower than deeper and then trace it on and cut that out, giving yourself about one centimeter seam allowance. And if you wanted, you could just stop here, no sewing at all, and there you go. If you have something like mine that has different patterns, you can wear it different ways to make it look a certain way. If you create it in a square shape, not a rectangle, you can also do that diamond, that diamond look. You could sew it down the sides if you want it not to move as much as well, but that kind of limits the different ways you can wear it. But what's also nice about this is you can take it off and just wear it as a scarf. Don't worry, I thought about this, I thought this through. <laughs> or better still, grab that belt, just turn it into a nice cute top guys it's nice and simple and if you find that the neck is a bit too wide for you all you have to do is just bunch it in a little bit and make it smaller what i'm going to do is show you how to make this a bit more cold proof by adding a neck so what you want to do is measure the neck hole you just made from one point go all the way around you know you know and then take a rectangle piece and make it the height you generally want the neck to be and it should be the length of your neck hole plus about two to three inches for extra space. Find the middle of this longest length and pin it to the middle of the front of your poncho and then stop at the middle of the back. You're going to sew all the way around to the middle of the back then go back and sew it again on the other side. Make sure you don't overlap it. So back stitch starting in the middle of the front. So all the way around and stop on that white mark in the middle of the back. Then go back and sew the other side, making sure you're aware of where you stopped last time and you don't sew over the other side, but you sew right up to it. Now we'll close that neck, so make sure you're looking at the wrong side of the poncho, put the two parts together, and then just sew a straight stitch down that seam. Again, you want to sew it as close as possible to the neck, but you don't want to overlap it. Once that's done, you're going to snip off the excess. Your neck should look something like this without any bunching or creasing. If there is, just go back and, you know, redo it as part of the process. Then finally, all that's left to do is to hem the top. So all I did was fold it over twice and then sew it down. And voila, you are done. A nice cute poncho to keep you nice and warm. You know, you can wear a coat under it as additional protection. You can just wear it to look cute. And then if you make yours extra long like mine, you can actually fold down the neck. And what's nice about this is you can still tuck in the neck and wear it as a scarf if you want to. So onto the second piece. This is the easiest one. Take your fabric and decide how long you want it to be from normally shoulder to waist and how wide you want it to be. You could do it from hand to hand like the last one. Then you're going to fold it four times again just like the last one. But this time what you're going to do is use that fold right there to cut down the middle of just one 
of the strips once you've found the midpoint just continue snipping 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 until you hit the middle and look at that you have completed your shawl it is that simple no sewing required if you want to you can go in and fray the edges or you can fold them in or you can use bias tape to close it off and that's it i remember i bought one of these a month ago or something because it was so cold and when i got it i really really like it i wear it a lot but i was like i can make this and so can you so yeah style it out wear a belt wear as a scarf and enjoy yourself on to number three the jacket so i'm going to show you two ways to kind of make this one is super easy and one is medium the way you start this is actually the same as the last two you want this material to be long enough to go from one hand to the other We've normally done shoulder to waist or hip so far. You probably want to do shoulder to knee this time. So the rectangle you're going to have is going to be the length of your hand to hand and then double the width of your shoulder to your knee or wherever you're ending. Then you're going to fold this four times just like you did last time. I have a bit of excess here because I didn't cut it off. On the fold, you're going to put down a jacket or something else you, you like the fit off that's not tight and it's not fitted. And just use it as a guideline to cut the side seam and cut the arms. Now, my side seam is a bit on a slant so that it creates that nice, you know, that nice look. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so once that's done, you need to now actually create the front. So, I'm going to mark the midpoint of the front. Then at the top, you're actually going to curve it out like I am, so it lays a bit nicer on you when you put it on. Once you've done that, open it up and then open it fully. And what you want to do then is match up the arms, so you actually have the fronts together and the backs together. Once that's matched up, you're going to cut down the front, starting at that curve you created. So I'm going to kind of curve my scissors into the curve I drew and then once that's been cut out I'll continue down the front to create the front opening so you know I can actually wear the jacket so yes you can do that by the way the lighting is not good in these clips so I really do apologize it's been getting dark so quickly recently and then the actual daylight is not that bright but it does get better later on so sorry so this is kind of where we are right now and um, so you know fashionable so now we're going to just sew the sides make sure you have the right sides together and you can see the wrong side and then just sew down using a straight stitch along the arm and then down the side and if you wanted you could stop right here and it would look lovely especially if you choose a really nice fabric that doesn't kind of roll like mine is doing i'm gonna press on and actually add something along the neck and then close off the hand so that it doesn't allow wind in and it's it's nice and warm and snug decide how thick you want the neck attachment to be and then just make sure your material is double that then decide how long you want it to be ideally you want it to reach the bottom of your jacket but mine didn't as you can see so i just had to add bear with it once you've got those two measurements you're going to cut out a long rectangle take that rectangle and fold it in half put in the right side together and then just sew a straight stitch along the ends the shortest part on the top and the bottom just to close it off so you have a nice crisp edge like this what i then did once i turned it the right way is that i closed off this edge and this is optional i only did this because the material i was using was folding in on itself just to make it easier to handle take this long strip that you've created and find the midpoint by folding it in half mark on the midpoint of your neck on the jacket and then match these two up making sure you're putting the right sides together what you're going to then do is clip that in place on one side and then the other you can tell i'm not much of a clipper or a pinner if i don't have to but i did it this time because the material is quite thick and the way my machine works sometimes it togs on the material so i want to make sure it stays exactly where i want and of course have a jiggle in between because <laughs> that is very important to the sewing process so starting in the middle we're going to sew down both sides making sure you stop where that attached piece ends back stitch and then there you go if you want to finish that seam you just created you can bias tape it which i wish i did i think bias tape would have looked really nice um but instead what i did was that i folded down that spare end part i have of my jacket and then just continued sewing along 
to keep down that flap I just made. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. I also hemmed the bottom of the jacket. Now onto the wrist. You could just hem this in, but I'm going to create a ruffle effect and tighten up that area so that the wind does not blow up my arm. So take a rectangle that is wider than double your hand so it can top through and you want it to be taller than double the height of the cuff. Take the rectangle and put it right sides together along the longest length and then just sew it down with a simple straight stitch. Once you've done that, you've got this. What you then want to do is turn it so it's the right ways and then turn it in on itself and match it up so you actually create the cuff. Take the cuff you've just made and take your jacket hand and tuck the jacket hand into the cuff. Obviously, your jacket hand is wider than the cuff, so it's going to be a bit tight in there. But match up the seams of the cuff and the jacket and then work your way around adding ruffles in equal gaps and pin it in place. Adjust it as you need to, but then you're going to sew those ruffles in place so it's nice and tight on the cuff. At this point, the material you're working with is going to be quite thick, so you might want to switch to a walking foot, which normally handles thicker materials a lot easier, but that's up to you and it depends on your material. Take your time with this, go slowly, and then backstitch once you've done to keep it in place. Do that for both wrists and there you go. You created a nice, cute jacket. I really like this piece so much. I think it is so nice. You can wear it a bit looser, you can tuck the cuffs in you can lift the neck protector strip up i don't know what to call that but that's why that sounded very like um, industrial neck protector strip style it as you want mix and match it grab some nice shoes grab a cute bag i took some pretty pretty pictures in the snow so follow me at created i am on instagram and check out creatediam.com because soon I'll put in all these additional details about where to get materials and things like that on the website so sign up for the email list and you should get that soon and of course something that's very important for you to know is that you are wonderfully created bye